G'day JD here. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this as short as I can, but uh, this is a project i had been working on for a while. Uh, the genesis of this project was uh, I went to a, uh, in Sydney there's a group called the Pick Club and they're sort of a sub-branch of the um, PC users uh, special interest group and uh, there was a guy there who was talking about, um, well he was asking me if uh, I wanted to do some firmware uh, for a MIDI project and um, sort of a side business hobby thing that he does uh, for people who converts uh, accordions uh, for MIDI and I think he already had some hardware um, that he uses standard stuff but he wanted to make a new thing uh, and he was asking me if I wanted to do some firmware and uh, the platform that he was keen on was uh, PIC32 uh, now I hadn't um, used any PIC32 as yet, I was vaguely aware of uh, the uh, the platform, um, but uh, kind of before I jumped in and said yeah sure let's do this, uh, I thought well um, I might do a bit of investigation, he was saying I'll do the hardware, don't worry about that, uh, you can do the firmware, uh, but you know not knowing about it I kind of said to myself well to really learn the platform um, I'll either have to use or make something myself. To begin with, I did grab uh, a Pinguino, uh, which I think uses the same chip that I've got here. And um, there's nothing wrong with the Pinguino platform. Uh, I had some difficulties with it because I was using um, the PicKit 2, and apparently, you know, if you update the PicKit 2, you can program them. Um, but I had all sorts of uh, trouble with it. Um, which may have just been me, um, but anyway, I put the uh, I put the Pinguino aside, and I uh, decided, well, I'll just make my own thing, and I'll also grab uh, the Pick Kit Three, so that I can do debugging. That was one of the things about the Pick Kit Two update was that you could program. Allegedly, you could program, and sometimes it did work. Like one time in twelve, it was able to program uh, the Pick. Um, but you can't debug with the PIC kit 2. Uh, so grab the PIC kit 3 so I could do debugging and programming. Um, right, so that's kind of how the idea of uh, this started. So I did make this and I had some trouble with it and I kind of left it alone for a while. It was, uh, I guess, whatever work was getting busy and I got uh, got bored with it. Um, decided to leave it alone. Actually one of the other things about the Pinguino stuff was uh, it took me a while to figure out uh, the PLL uh, setup um, of, of the PIC. Um, so anyway that was just uh, me and my ignorance. Uh, but uh, so I'll just uh, now that I've been you've been staring at the board for a while I'll just go up to uh, the circuit diagram, so, sorry, I've printed it small, I've printed it A3, but um, because I haven't um, gone in to edit this properly, um, it's all uh, spread out a bit, so, you know, there's the, uh, oh, jeez, focus you bastard, um, there's the pick kit 32, and uh, to get the buttons in, I mean, I could have put it on all the I.O., but the idea with this project is there's a lot of keys and buttons on an accordion, so um, I thought with the platform, um, the guy that I was talking to um, was, I believe, doing uh, parallel in serial out shift registers, so I've just uh, done the same thing here, and I've put uh, buttons and some pin headers on all the inputs to that. And uh, so that has the inputs into the pick there. Uh, programming header, some LEDs, um, doo -doo -doo, decoupling, just some uh, buttons for triggering stuff while I was debugging. Maybe you can use them later as well. Uh, there's the MIDI output. Um, uh, just another random pin header just because I thought I might have room and I might want to connect some other stuff to it. And uh, the two crystals. I'm not really using the uh, uh, the crystal, the low power crystal, I'm just using the high speed um, well it's not high speed is it? Um, anyway, what is it? it's um, 8 meg, yeah that's right um, and the idea was you know 8 meg and then divide it by 4 and then times it by 20 for 80 meg CPU clock and then the peripherals would be uh, at 40 meg, that was the idea anyway, and that's what I've got it set it to set to now. But it took me a while to figure out how that how the pick gets set up for all that. Um, anyway, um, 
I've put a 5 volt regulator in there uh, for the MIDI. Uh, MIDI is a 5 volt uh, level. Um, but technically there's 5 volts on MIDI line anyway from from the uh, whatever the host, well what I'm calling the host anyway, which would be something like the PC or your patch box. Uh, that should be supplying 5 volts. But in this case I've uh, put the 5 volts in there and there's 3.3 for, um, for the processor. Um, I also, to begin with, thought that uh, my decoupling was bad. I had some problems with talking to the chip. That just turned out to be, um, uh, because I've hand soldered the QFP, as you can see there, it's nice and dirty with a lot of flux, uh, crusty flux on it. Um, yeah, just the first time that I put it on there, there were a couple of pins that were either shorted or open, and I just uh, took it off and reseated it again. And um, that uh, fixed up most of the problems, and then there were a couple of other things which were just open pins and... Uh, again, that was just a short bit of rework to get them working. Uh, so that was that board. But in between uh, the frustration of getting this working, uh, this big board working, um, I thought, well, I'll just cut down the complexity. You know, I do want to know how to get the PIC32 working, and I want to know how to do it on my uh, own hardware. Uh, so I did another board which uh, is basically, let's see if I can orient it in the same, I'll just kind of put it next to each other. Um, you can see that there's a lot of uh, similarity there, there's um, most of the stuff that's on this little board, um, you know, it's from the same design as, as the big board there. Um, and uh, so I thought, well if I just cut it down and I'd go back to some um, bare bones kind of... Um, design uh, then I should be able to sort this one out easier and this one did more or less get going quite quickly and I think it was on this one that I uh, sort of you know learnt uh, what I was doing with the um, PLL setup and actually what confused me also with the PLL setup is that um, I think a couple of times I did actually get it right but uh, had a little main uh, loop deal where I was toggling an LED and uh, it seemed very very slow in toggling. I uh, still have to learn a little bit about the uh, the pipeline and the caching arm. Um, it's I think it was toggling at maybe 720 kilohertz or something somewhere around there you know just uh, toggle LED well I wasn't even doing turn on turn off I was just doing you know toggle to the other state um, just in a main loop and the thing wasn't doing anything else there weren't any other interrupts going off or anything like that and I thought well that seems a bit slow for the 40 meg or rather even 80 meg CPU apparently the IO isn't off the peripheral clock it's off the uh, CPU clock uh, but a couple of things there um, I guess for the IO there does need to be some uh, wait states um, put in and also once I'd turned the um, the uh, prefetch cache on um, that ramped up to like 10 meg or something, so it was quite quite a difference. And playing around with the options in the um, for the prefetch uh, cache, um, you know, some um, different levels of caching. Um, I think it you know sort of went from that 750 kilohertz without it to one, and then to five, and then to uh, one megahertz, then to five megahertz, ten, and then to ten megahertz. That was the frequency that I was uh, measuring of that toggling LED. Um, so uh, after I sort of figured that out and saw the LED toggling in the main loop at ten megahertz, I was quite um, satisfied with uh, the fact that the PLL was running at the sort of speeds I'd expect. Um, so once I had got this board going, uh, and I'll yeah, I'll just go to the circuit diagram. So there's the pick again, and just you know LEDs, the programming header, reset button, uh, the two crystals, uh, just a simple output uh, drive driven output, um, a couple of buttons, uh, serial, so I could do some debugging. Uh, the the other big board has serial on it as well, just for doing some uh, serial debugging. And I've just got the 3.3 regulator on on that one. Um, on both boards I had been worried about uh, the coupling because I had a couple of things that weren't working to begin with. Uh, a lot of the forums are suggesting that um, uh, the coupling, sorry, decoupling of the power supply needed to be fairly, um, well, what I think is probably crazy, the V-core uh, 
suggesting that that needed um, a great amount of uh, decoupling, you know, up to, I don't know, 100, 200 microfarads or something, which uh, I did end up putting on this one, but it, uh, actually I ended up putting that, excuse me, on this one, there's less on this one, I think that was 68 microfarads or something, but I think that's probably still even overkill, and I've got these massive ceramics um, on top of uh, just a couple of uh, 0603, uh, ceramics uh, probably makes it um, 50 microfarads or something on each of those. One of those is um, one of those is on the analog pins. You know, I to be honest, I didn't really decouple the analog and digital very well on this, um, but uh, I was kind of figuring. Well, I've got them so close to the pins. Who gives a rat's? Um, it hasn't been a problem for me. If I redesign the board, I'd probably decouple the analog and uh, digital a little bit better. Um, you know, maybe uh, with a 10 ohm into the analog side and uh, decoupled with uh, a little bit bigger than uh, 0.1 microfarad, I'd probably give that uh, 4.7 to 10 microfarad decoupling after the um, after a 10 ohm or uh, something lower, 4.7 ohm. Um, but as is, it works fine. I'm not using the analog, um, any analog uh, other than the PLL, right? I'm not using any other analog features. Um, so now that I've uh, oh one thing I was going to say now that I've prattled on long enough, uh, but I will prattle on just a little bit longer. Uh, this uh, dirty little uh, red wire wire wrapping wire hack uh, that was a little bit embarrassing. Actually, these boards I put together really quickly, like you know, uh, sort of within half a day uh, design, and uh, there were a bunch of things that I overlooked. So there were probably you know it's. No, <coughs> no wonder that I had a few issues uh, with this design. Um, but one thing, stupid thing that I had done was I'd hooked into the um, uh, to the one's complement output. There, you can see not Q7 is connected into serial data in of the next one. Um, I didn't look at the data sheet properly. Uh, I was in my mind. I was in uh, 4094 mode. Uh, 4094 is uh, serial in, parallel out um, type shift register. And in that case, uh, the um, the not Q output on those ones uh, isn't isn't inverted data. It just means that the data gets clocked uh, on the negative going edge of the clock rather than the positive going edge. So. Uh, there's two outputs, one of them has the data clocked on the positive going output and uh, the other um, output has the data clocked out on the negative going uh, edge of the clock and uh, you know quite often um, you'd want, uh, if you're doing high speed stuff uh, especially uh, you might want your uh, data being clocked out by uh, the host um, on the positive going clock and then um, clocked out serially to the other devices uh, in the uh, in the train uh, on the uh, negative going clock just so the data is ready in there uh, uh, because it's already clocked on the positive going and then uh, for the other ones get gets clocked on the negative going edge uh, anyway um, but that's not what it means on uh, what am I using here these are 74 for LV165, LV165A, uh, and they seem to work quite well. All right, uh, now that I've prattled on long enough about uh, design and whatnot, I'll go to hey, there's me, and there's all my dirty fingerprints on the screen. Uh, I might just bring that down a bit. Uh, zoom out. Uh, this is uh, Fruity Loops. Uh, some of you more musically uh, inclined people will know what this is all about um, I have move that uh, USB MIDI plugged into the computer uh, this is a nice little uh, $50 Roland unit to begin with I also had some problem with the MIDI side of things that I thought was probably me and my code and whatnot uh, but it turned out to be uh, the cheap, you know, four dollar, five dollar um, USB to MIDI device that I bought, and um, and I thought, well, 
I really have to check this, so I'll buy something that really, really, really should work. You know, Roland's got a good name, so... And it works really well, this one, and I ended up uh, binning the uh, $4, $5 one that I bought that just didn't work. Sometimes it had enumerated itself as other devices, other than, you know, the USB to MIDI device that it was, so that was just how um, robust that device was. All right. Now, I've set up uh, the MIDI uh, with the buttons. This is... Uh, I can't remember what is it, it's, uh, two or three? I don't know, it's an octave below middle C and that's the C, the C there and I've got it hooked up to um, <sighs> two Fruity Loops here and uh, I've got a uh, guitar loaded there as a sample and my, uh, my laptop's really uh, quiet with these samples, I don't know why, you can see the MIDI every time I press the button and um, well, I don't know if you can still hear it if I've got the camera over here, but... I think that's middle C, is it? I think so. Okay, so I'm using the... Um, Sort of simple format of MIDI, uh, three bytes. Uh, what's the first byte? That's um, channel and command, I think. Um, and so the command is note on, note off, and the channel. I think I've just set that to channel one. There's 16 channels in MIDI. Uh, and then the note. Uh, so um, there's a a number for each uh, note along the scale. And um, the last one is velocity and I've just set that to, I mean, they're buttons, right, there's, uh, it's difficult to, um, to gauge velocity just with a button, um, and, uh, so I've just set the velocity to a, uh, static value, um, I'll just change to, uh, something else, I don't know what, uh, alright, the loop, I'm still not sure if you'll be able to hear this properly. Oh man, I'm going to have to put this closer to the speaker. Alright, here we go. Uh, a little bit of... Whoa! Okay, this sample's a bit louder, that's nice. A uh, little bit of uh, synth saxophone. All right. Well, that's uh, pretty much it, really. Um, the project itself. I'm not quite sure why uh, Lino was um, hooked. Up. Well, uh, I don't know why he was. The PIC32 was the choice of platform for this. Um, once I kind of finished this and got it to this point, um, I started sort of thinking about that, and I was wondering if maybe uh, he was thinking, well, PIC32 it might be uh, good for uh, straight USB MIDI out. Uh, at the moment, you know, I've got the uh, serial MIDI out and um, then into a converter and then USB into the computer, but I wonder if he was thinking of this project uh, would be useful to have the uh, he wanted the USB option, uh, so that might be the next iteration of this um, otherwise um, I'm just going to put that to him, I might just um, uh, send him a link to this video and um, then he can decide uh, what he wants to do next with this, or he may have already gone on and uh, on his own firmware and hardware. I mean, it's been like a year now uh, since uh, that was uh, proposed. Um, anyway, that's that. Thanks for watching. Cheers.